Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. In this video, we're gonna talk about creating lookalike audiences in Facebook ads. Now, if you don't know, a lookalike audience is just an audience of people that look like a, another audience that you've created. So basically, you need to create a seed audience, and in Facebook, that's a custom audience. So you create this custom audience of people that have engaged with your business, whether they've engaged with an ad or your Facebook page, or maybe they visited your website, or maybe they've opted in for a lead magnet, or maybe they purchased something and they're a customer. So you have a, a list of people that have performed actions. Again, this is a custom audience. And then you take that custom audience and you can create a lookalike audience of people that look like those people on your custom audience. So there's two audiences we got to create, custom audience and then a lookalike audience. And lookalike audiences tend to do very, very well for your cold traffic campaigns because you're going out there and you're getting a list of people that look like people that have already purchase something from you or have already opted in for a lead magnet from you or something like that, right? So lookalike audiences are very, very powerful and probably the best source of cold traffic that you can get. Better than targeting interests and demographics and behaviors. It's like the best thing you can do. Now, the reason you might not be able to use a lookalike audience is you might not have enough data right away. You do need at least 100 people on your custom audience list in order to create a lookalike audience. That being said, 100 people on a custom audience list is typically not enough for Facebook to like really figure out what that person looks like. A better option is to have 500 to 1,000 people on your custom audience before you create your lookalike audience. So if you're just getting into advertising and building your business, you might have to target interests at first until you get those 500 to 1,000 people in your custom audience, and then you create the lookalike audience, and then you start running ads to your lookalike audience, which typically does better than any other type of cold targeting you can possibly do. All right, so let's go ahead and set all this stuff up inside of Facebook Ads Manager. So here I am in the Ads Manager, and what we wanna do is come over here to the menu, and we wanna to go to Audiences. And now what we need to do is go ahead and create an audience, and you see right here we have Custom Audiences. So again, this is like our seed audience that we use to create that lookalike audience, and a custom audience, again, is just a, a list of people that have engaged with your business some way. So you can create a custom audience based off of a website. So you install your Facebook pixel on your website. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a video on how to do that down below. You can check that out. So you have your pixel on your website. People click around on your website. They look at things, they opt in for things, they buy things, etc. And you can create an audience. We'll look at this closely in a few minutes. You can also go ahead and upload a customer list. So if you have an e-commerce store or some, some store where you're collecting you know, buyer information, name, email, phone number, what they bought, all that type of stuff, you can upload your customer list into Facebook Ads Manager and it'll create that custom audience for you. And so obviously that's very powerful because you're uploading a list of buyers and then you can create a lookalike audience of a list of buyers. So we're gonna do this in this video as well. We also have it with app activity. So if you have a mobile app, you can go ahead and create a, a custom audience based off of those individuals. Offline activity. So if you have an offline business and a point of sale system like in your store where people you know are checking out, uh, you could go ahead and record that information in your point of sale system and push it into Facebook and create a custom audience that way. And then we also have Facebook sources, so video, so like a video ad where somebody watches like 25% of your video or something to that effect, you can build a audience of people that have watched your videos or have engaged with your Instagram business profile or clicked on one of your lead forms and whether they opted in or not or events or instant experience or engaged with your Facebook page at all. So they clicked on your Facebook page, looked at it, something like that. So there's a bunch of different ways to create these custom audiences and we're just gonna cover a couple of them on this video because the core of the video is lookalike audiences but most of these custom audiences are pretty simple to understand once you understand how one of them works. So anyway, let's just go to website real quick. And now what we need to do is go ahead and add people to our audience. And basically you select different criteria that you're looking for. And if people meet those criteria that you've set in here, they'll be added to your custom audience. So just for the sake of example, we'll go in here and we notice that we can go ahead and look for all website visitors or people who visited specific web pages or visitors by time spent. Or also we can select different events that they've gone ahead and triggered like page view event, purchase events, add to cart events, etc. And again, this all has to do with your pixel. So if you need help with your pixel, check out that video below. I have a lot of information on that. 
But just for the sake of example, I'm gonna go with all website visitors in the last 30 days, and we can create a, an audience, a look-like audience of people that look like people that visit my website, right? So it'd be like website visitors 30 days. And also real quick, you can go ahead and get crazy with this, like include more people, exclude people, et cetera. It's so a lot of different options, but we're just gonna keep it simple now and go ahead and create the audience of people that have visited my website in the last 30 days. And then it gives us the option to go ahead and create a lookalike audience. And that's what we wanna do in this video, but I'm gonna come back to it. So I'm just gonna hit done for now. And I wanna go ahead and create another custom audience, custom audience. And I wanna do it based off of a customer list because this is very powerful. A lot of people have customer lists already and then they're coming into Facebook and you can use that database of buyers and upload it and that gives you like a head start in your advertising effort. So very, very powerful feature. Also, you could use this feature to upload an email list. So if you don't have any buyers yet, but you do have an email list, you could upload this as well at this point in time. And it gives us some information of how to go ahead and prepare our customer list. And basically you need to make sure that you have at least one main identifier like email, phone number, et cetera. So that way Facebook can take that information, look through their database of people that are on Facebook and match that information up. And that's how it builds its audiences. It's grabbing this personally identifiable information and matching it to the information of people that use Facebook, right? So you upload their email, phone number, name, etc. Pretty much as much information as you can possibly have on that customer so that way Facebook has a greater chance of finding those people and matching them appropriately. Like it says right here, the more identifiers you provide, the better the match rate. So that's the goal is to provide as much information as possible. I also wanna point out that you can add the lifetime value of a customer for a value-based lookalike. So if you have the amount of money a customer has spent on your website, well then Facebook can use that information to determine the type of customers that spend the most money with your business. So that's very, very powerful. So if you're able to provide your lifetime value amounts to Facebook, like Facebook can build a very, very super awesome audience of people that you know are big spenders with your business and most likely to convert. So again, the more information you can provide to Facebook Facebook, the better. And you could also download a list template if you want to or see formatting guidelines or import from MailChimp. So if you have a MailChimp, you can go ahead and import your customers right from there. So that's kind of handy. But anyway, we'll go with next now. And it asks us if our list includes a lifetime value for our customers. And yep, the one I'm gonna upload does. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And then it gives us some rules we have to go ahead and follow and agree to. So read that, accept it if you agree to it, obviously. And then we need to go ahead and upload our list. So let me go ahead and grab my list real quick. And then you can go ahead and name your audience if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it the name of my file. I'm gonna get hit next now. And then it asks us what field is our customer value field. So we select this one and then you select your lifetime value field. So I'll just select that one right there. And then I hit next. And then I need to go ahead and map the fields that are in my spreadsheet. So right here we have my customer value field. Then we have email and then I come over to actions needed and I can go ahead and sync up my other fields that I have. So this first one here is first name. So let's grab that one. And then I go ahead and I have last name then. And then I also have state, state. And I also have zip code, zip code. So there, I gave them a couple extra fields so they can hopefully match more people and provide a better audience. So then I just hit upload and create and it goes out there, it uploads the spreadsheet, and then it goes around and tries to match as many people as humanly possible to what I've uploaded. Now you might get some errors or something like that, as long as it's not, nothing crazy like the entire spreadsheet broke, uh, you're probably okay. So my error right here is that I have three negative numbers and whatever, my lifetime value must have been messed up on some of those people. And Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and created two custom audiences. And again, there's a bunch of different ways to create these custom audiences. So you can just play around with it to figure out what type of audience you wanna create. And I also wanna point something else out. You know, when you're creating these custom audiences, like a buyer's list is the best option, right? Because that's a list of buyers. And especially one that has like lifetime value and over a thousand customers on it. Like that's like the best possible custom audience you could create for creating a look like audience of, right? Because that's the people that are like down here on the customer journey map. People that look like buyers that buy a lot. But obviously it can take a little while to get to a thousand customers if you're just starting out. So the next option could be some sort of conversion. So it could be like a lead magnet conversion, right? So somebody becoming a lead, like that's 
kind of further down the customer journey, or of course, like just single buyers, right? So they might not be repeat buyers or have large lifetime values or anything like that, but you know, they're further down the customer journey. So my point here is when you're creating these custom audiences and lookalike audiences, you want people far along the customer journey as possible, because of course, if you're creating a lookalike audience of people that, you know, just looked at one of your ads, like it's not gonna be that good of an audience. Yeah, it might be good for people that look at your ads, but it's not an audience of people that go out and buy things and buy things multiple times. So I just wanna point that out, that the further down the customer journey that you can create your custom audience, the better. All right, so let's go ahead and turn one of these custom audiences into a lookalike audience. The same concept applies for any site, any type of custom audience you create. So as long as you know how to create a custom audience, creating a lookalike audience is the same, same steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on my lifetime value audience. And so I check this little block and I go ahead and hit create lookalike. And then we go ahead and select the source. Now I already selected the source because I hit the check block. So that was easy enough. And then we go ahead and select the audience location. So what countries or regions do you wanna go ahead and create this lookalike audience of? So it could be like United States, right? So I'll throw that in there. And I could add multiple countries. So I could add United Kingdom as well. So I'm targeting you know, the top whatever percent of people that look like my buyer in both of these countries. And so I'm actually not gonna target the United Kingdom, I'm just gonna leave it the United States. The next option is to select the audience size and the first question it asks us is the number of lookalike audiences we wanna go ahead and create. I'm gonna leave it at one right now because that's the easiest to explain and understand. And then in a minute here, we'll, we'll create multiples and you'll see what that means. So it gives us a slider down here and we can slide it around to select essentially our lookalike audience size. So of course, you know, the zero to 1% is like the the closest 1% of people that look like our custom audience. So when you're starting out, I recommend starting at a zero to 1% audience because that is the most precise look like audience you can get, right? It's the top 1% of people in the United States that look like my customers with customer lifetime value amounts associated with their account, right? Now, if you're scaling out, you could go ahead, maybe bump it up to 2% and you notice like my audience size goes from two something million to 4.7 million. So quite a bit larger audience, obviously, but it's not as good, right? And so I only recommend going to the 2% range when you've like maxed out the, the top 1%, right? So that's pretty easy to understand, right? You create one look like audience and you select how much percent you want it to look like. You could also gap it if you want to. So if you want to create one for the top one to 3%, you could go ahead and do that as well if you want to do something like that. So anyway, we can come down here then and select, we want to create three look like audiences at once. So basically it just saves you, saves you time. So how it's set up now, let's do it like, so now how it's set up is I'm targeting the top 1% of people that look like my customers with customer lifetime value. I'm creating another audience of people from one to 2% of my custom audience, right? So this group right in here. So that's like the next closest group of people. And then I'm creating a third audience of two to 4%. And you know, they're kind of getting out there top 4% of the population that looks like my custom audience. And so it's still pretty targeted. It's better than, you know, 99%, but it's not as good as 1%. So anyway, as you scale your advertising efforts, a strategy is to target the top 1%, the top one to 2%, and then have a larger audience of the top two to four or two, two to five percent of people and you see which lookalike audience does better also you know you could use this audience to target people and you show them like content right you bring them to blog posts and things like that try and get them warmed up to your business your products your services things like that this audience maybe you try and get them to convert straight from cold traffic into a lead so you take them straight to a lead magnet or something like that and then this top 1% audience, you take them straight to buying a, a low dollar product or service straight from cold traffic to buyer, right? So there's different strategies what you could do with these different audiences and also it depends on your budget. Like if you're running a pretty small budget, probably $100 a day or less, you know, 1% is going to last you quite a while, but if you're pumping thousands of dollars a day into it, you're probably going to need to scale up pretty quickly and you might need to use some of these alternative audiences and different, you know, percentages of custom audiences. So anyway, once you're happy, you just just come over here to create audience and Facebook will go out there and start creating the lookalike audiences. So it breaks it out. Lookalike 1% here and then 1% to 2% on this one and then 2 to 5% in this one. And now when you create your campaigns and ad sets at the ad set level, you're just going to select these different custom audiences that you want to go ahead and target. And it's pretty much that simple right there. Now I do want to point out one thing real quick. 
when you do use a lookalike audience and you're setting up your ad set, you don't wanna select a bunch of demographic or interest or behavioral information. Let me, let me show you. All right, so here I'm selecting my audience at the ad set level, right? We select our audience at the ad set level and I'm using a custom audience and I'm using a lookalike audience. Now, what I was talking about is you don't wanna go in here and configure a bunch of these demographics, interests, behaviors, etc. You wanna leave this wide open. So, I mean, what Facebook did when they created this look like audience is they essentially did all this stuff for you. They went, they checked out which locations are producing the conversions, which age ranges are working, which genders, which languages, which demographics, interests, and behaviors. Like that, that's part of your lookalike audience. So when you're using a lookalike audience, you don't mess with these other things. You don't try and make it more narrow or more specific or anything like that. You leave it wide open because that, that's what the lookalike audience is. They did that for you. It's just contained in the lookalike audience itself. So I just wanted to point that out real quick because I've seen a lot of people use a lookalike audience and then they start messing with this stuff too. And you don't want to do that at all. You want to leave just the lookalike audience and leave everything else wide open. And so that is pretty much it for this video. Again, the main thing is you create a custom audience and that's like your seed audience for your lookalike audience. And then you go ahead and use that lookalike audience, which again is great for cold traffic and hopefully it produces really good results for you and hopefully you found this video helpful if you did I appreciate any sorts of likes comments subscribes anything like that and of course if you have questions please feel free to ask them down below also below in the description I'll have some links to some other Facebook ads training and content so if you want to check that out please do so and I hope you have a great rest of the day